Hello and a very warm welcome. My name is Chris Bishop and I'm leading a new initiative in Microsoft Research called AI for Science. This is an exciting opportunity to bring together machine learning with the natural sciences, chemistry, physics, biology. And it's a field where we anticipate many very exciting advances over the next decade. Today I'm joined by Frank Noe, professor at the Free University of Berlin, and we have some exciting news to share. So, uh, Frank, you're no stranger to Microsoft Research. You've been with us uh, as a visiting researcher for the last year. And uh, today we're announcing that uh, you'll be joining us full time from the 1st of October. Um, and also that we're going to be opening Microsoft Research in Berlin. So, um, first of all, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself, a bit about your background and uh, how you came to work in the intersection of machine learning with the natural sciences? Thank you, Chris. Very nice to be here. And thank you for the warm welcome. And I'd also like to, to thank you for this opportunity to start a new research lab in Berlin, which I think is a, is a great opportunity. You know, I love Berlin and, and many people do and people like to move there and work there and live there. And, and I think it's, it's a great asset to have this uh, additional site for the AI for Science initiative. So, but myself, I have a background in electrical engineering and computer science. Uh, so did bachelor and master there. And then I worked a little bit in an AI startup in the dot-com phase in 2000. And uh, after that, I, I decided I wanted to somehow work on the interface between computer science and the natural science. But I had this weird background where it would be not very natural for me to do a PhD in the natural science. So I found this cool institute in Heidelberg, the Interdisciplinary Center for Scientific Computing, where I did my PhD, where there were many people working in interdisciplinary fields. And that, that's where I started with molecular sciences, molecular physics, etc. And I was really interested by proteins, protein structure, protein uh, folding and dynamics at that time. And so proteins are these amazing machines where you basically have, it's very simple chemistry. Basically, they're molecules comprised of 20 different building blocks that can be arranged in like one-dimensional sequences, and then they fold up into three-dimensional structure, and this structure sort of determines their function. And they, they really do pretty much anything in the body. They transport things like oxygen from the lung to the muscle, or they build up they build up biological structure, etc. So pretty much everything that happens in your body is somehow realized, implemented by proteins. Um, but it's incredibly hard to find out how they work because we have limited in experimental observability and it's very difficult to compute as well. And so this is like one of the problems that kind of got me started and then I moved to Berlin, um, set up a new uh, research lab there on the interface between computational statistics and, and molecular simulation and then gradually moved more into machine learning. And then especially in the last couple of years with the deep learning um, developments, really focused on that. Well, we're hugely excited that you're going to be joining us. And, uh, you know, more than a year ago now, as we started to think about this field and the exciting right. developments, we noticed that you know, your name came up time and again. We, we were finding these interesting papers and often you're a co-author on those papers. Um, one of the things that we've been thinking about um, is uh, something we, we think of it in terms of the, the, this fifth paradigm of scientific discovery. So the, 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 the four paradigms mm -hmm. have been the, the, the empirical approach to scientific discovery. Then we had the theoretical sort of 17th century onwards. Uh, we, we then had computation in the 20th, 20th century. In the 21st century, we have this data-intensive approach uh, to, to scientific discovery based on uh, techniques such as machine learning applied to large-scale observational data. But, but through the work of you and others, we're seeing um, hints of this fifth paradigm, the idea that machine learning can be used in a very different way, not to analyze empirical data, but now to uh, accelerate the solution of more like the fundamental e equations of, yeah. uh, of, of science. And can you talk a little bit about that? Because uh, a lot of your work seems to fit very naturally into that fifth paradigm. Sure. So, so an interesting question here, um, what can be done with simulation versus other maybe more empirical methods? So when we look at discoveries related to molecular sciences, such as drug discovery or material discovery, we see that most of them are kind of made in, an, let's say, an empirical way by, by using combination of intuition and experimentation. Uh, so, so wet labs, for example, and perhaps using uh, data science and machine learning to somehow analyze or work with this data, perhaps in an iterative way. But kind of an alternative way to make progress here is to 
to employ computer simulation. And so sort of the, the, the dream, the ultimate goal of, of theoretical chemistry is to kind of replace real world labs by computational labs, by being able to compute properties of molecules and matter with an accuracy that is equal or better than that of, of experiment. And I think we have seen very exciting developments in, in that direction through the through computers becoming faster and, and new hardware such as GPUs and possibly in the future quantum computers to become available, better algorithms and now machine learning. I think we are able to push the boundaries of what simulation can can do and more and more of, let's say, traditional experimentation and this more empirical approach can be replaced by actually doing computer experiments. And I think that's a very exciting development because in the computer we can do experiments that we cannot do in the real world or are very hard or maybe hazardous to do. And uh, I think we want to push that boundary with the help of machine learning and all the other technologies that we can get our hands on. That's, that's very exciting. Now, we, um, the Microsoft Research has been in Europe for coming up on 25 years, mm -hmm. uh, mostly focused really in Cambridge, UK. Um, but, but recently we announced a new research hub in, in Amsterdam, and now today we're announcing another research hub in Berlin. Can you tell us a little bit about Berlin as a place to do research? Sure. So Berlin is a very interesting place to do research because it has three large universities, the Free University, the Technical and the Humboldt University. So that's more than 120,000 students combined. And because it's the capital, it also has a lot of research institutes and non-university centers like Max Planck Institutes, Helmholtz Institutes, Leibniz, Fraunhofer, etc. And um, so this creates a really vibrant and, and very large scientific community. So I think especially for basic research, it's an extremely rich ecosystem, I would say. So I think it's, it's a perfect location for a new lab. And I think one of the things that perhaps, so in, in Germany, one, th one of the things that we're really doing well is fundamental research. And I think where we're still lacking is a little bit of translational um, research and scaling um, towards, you know, in industrial level startups, etc. And I think Microsoft research really sits nicely in between fundamental research and kind of industrial applications and startups. So it's, I think it's it's a really nice addition to the to the ecosystem and a great opportunity to hire very very good talent. I think the, the natural sciences represent a huge field in chemistry, physics, biology. Uh, so many opportunities, and we think about the places where machine learning can be mm -hmm. relevant. There are there are so many. Um, out of that huge space, are there areas that you're particularly excited to work on in the next few years? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so I really like to take a fundamental approach here. So, what are the what are the key problems in the simulation sciences that are kind of holding us back uh, to make progress? And I would say there there are three that are kind of largely agreed upon that are fundamental problems. One is the electronic structure problem. So trying to solve quantum states of molecules, trying to solve the electronic Schrodinger equation, for example, because that would allow us to compute pretty much any chemical property of a molecule or a material. And that's very hard. The second is what's often referred to as the force field problem. So when we do molecular simulations, like a molecular dynamic simulation to simulate the motion and the structure of a protein, for example, then we usually don't directly use the electronic Schrodinger equation. We use a surrogate model. So something that we call maybe an emulator in the AI for Science initiative. So we need to try to make this model as accurate as possible by parameterizing it with, um, for example, quantum quantum chemical data. Um, so, so getting higher accuracy and still having this computational efficiency so that we can actually do the computations fast enough, that's an important goal. And the third one, and that, that's really what kind of followed me throughout my career, is the sampling problem. So, um, for example, if you want to just compute um, two proteins that are kind of approaching each other and bind to each other. And that's a process just that occurs millions and billions of times per second in a, in, a, in a cell. So that's kind of one of the elementary processes that these proteins need to do in order to communicate, in order to interact, in order to communicate the, 
their state to the other protein, for example. So doing that, even on, on a supercomputer, this association and the dissociation of two proteins, that could take a century on a supercomputer if we, if we just run direct simulation. So I think we need to use a lot of tricks and, and uh, develop new tools, and machine learning is very promising there in order to make this pro process practically computable. So Frank, you're going to be making quite a big transition from being a university professor to joining Microsoft Research. So, so what do you see as some of the advantages of being part of Microsoft Research? So that, that's a great question. So of course, I, I, I have really had a very good time at university and kind of built a big group and I have enjoyed doing that very much. But at some point, you know, after a certain number of 100, 200 papers or so, one asks the question, you know, is what I'm doing really, what's the impact of what we're doing? Like, does it make a difference whether we, we do this piece of research or, or whether we don't? And I think in, there are some examples of industrial research labs in the recent past, and also in the more distant past with examples like Bell Labs or so, where really key discoveries have been made in industry funded labs because it allows um, people with very different backgrounds, interdisciplinary teams to work together and just have a lot of resources in terms of compute and, and, and other resources in order to really go for like big goals for kind of moonshot projects. And, and these are the projects that I'm most excited about. So I'm really asking myself the question, you know, what can I do with the, let's say, second half of my career that really makes a difference uh, uh, to the world where I can really maximally ex uh, make use of, of, of my specific skills or abilities and, and uh, those of the people that I can hire. And I think Microsoft Research, especially with this AI for Science initiative, resonates very much with that and, and has really sparked my attention and I'm I think it's a, it's it's an adventure, but I'm very excited to to get it started. Yeah, well, well, we're absolutely delighted to have you on board, Frank. It's yeah. going to be it's going to be tremendous fun, and uh, and I hope very impactful. I think if we if we look ahead to the next decade, we do have this extraordinary opportunity, and mm. we do. Uh, I think all of us firmly believe that this will be a very very exciting research frontier, and yes. and very 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 interesting things will happen. Um, just just one final question, just so we can get to know you a little bit better. So when you're when you're not doing research, what what sort of things interest you? So I would say my main hobby probably is scuba diving mm -hmm. that I share with my wife. And um, so there's actually an interesting little story. So there's, there's one place we, we went to in French Polynesia, so in the middle of the Pacific, a small island. And this um, basically is, has the shape of a ring. It's, a, it's an atoll with the shape of the ring. And uh, because there are just a few connections between the inside and the outside of the ring, like canyons, whenever there's change of tide, water is slowing out and in to the in inside pool. So you can make this dive where you um, swim along the outer rim and then you enter the canyon as the tide is rising and then the current sucks you and you're flying through this canyon underwater and there are lots of fish and sharks flying with you. And so that's a super cool dive. And recently it turned out that Matthias Troyer, our colleague in Microsoft Research Quantum, has, is also a scuba diver and has done the exact same dives. And we shared a few interesting pictures and so on. And that's a very cool connection, I think, besides science. I hope maybe one day we can go diving together. I've done a little bit of diving, but nothing at the, uh, the kind of level that you've done. So Frank, it's really very exciting that you're joining us. And of course, you'll be part of this global AI for Science team. We already have labs in Cambridge, uh, a newish lab in Amsterdam, amazing team in Beijing, uh, folks in, in Redmond, in, in Seattle. Uh, and, and of course, we're going to be hiring not just for the Berlin lab, but across all of these sites uh, as part of a major Microsoft initiative that, that we're all very energetic about. So uh, and we look forward to seeing what we can achieve together over the coming decade. So again, thank you very much for joining us. I'm very excited too. And thank you as well.